Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome to the inside of the BMW iX M60. Welcome to a charging station where I was just having a conversation with a viewer about 800 volt versus 400 volt and I thought, hey, this is a great video topic. I'm just gonna record this, throw it up right now and share some of my thoughts on why the 800 volt thing is thrown around a little bit too much and really the main benefits and disadvantages of having a higher voltage system in an electric car. We're talking pretty high level. If you guys want me to go more in depth with this, perhaps we'll get actual cars and do the real testing and show you everything we're talking about. But these are my thoughts on why 800 volt doesn't need to be the end all be all situation. <laughs> So we are sharing just my thoughts on the 800 volt class of electric vehicles. For those of you who may be new to the topic, uh, we've really seen this shift in two different classes of electric vehicle architecture in terms of voltage. And that would be a 400 volt class of vehicle and an 800 volt class of vehicle. Now there's a couple things to keep in mind with both of these. The first is we're typically talking about nominal voltage which is the battery pack, again, high level, roughly around 50% state of charge, right in the middle, what's the voltage? And uh, of course, when the battery packs are dead, you might have a, a 400 volt class of vehicle down in the 330, 340 volt range, and full, it might be 450 volt range. But keep in mind, voltage is quite dynamic across the entire uh, discharge curve of the pack. That is not necessarily the case with LFP, which is why you need to full charge LFP cars, especially the way Tesla does it, but we'll save that for another topic. Uh, 800 volt class of vehicles are the same as well, which is sometimes when they're full, they're like 780 to 820 volts and dead, they could be into the 600 volt range. So there's really this range of voltage operating window that cars can be in and each is different. And honestly, to the general driving experience of the user, big news, if you don't wanna watch the whole video, uh, if you're driving and charging at home and just cruising down the roads, there's pretty much no difference between a 400 volt and an 800 volt car. They don't sound any different. They don't feel any different. There's no inherent advantages to just going to Starbucks and back in the morning to having both. However, uh, there are, I guess we'll talk about the why 400 volt wasn't enough and why we needed this need for higher voltage cars, especially the expensive ones are going with higher voltage. The real, I would say, um, uh, contrarian to that, the, the cars that don't fit that mold are the Hyundai, Kia, Genesis, E, GMP cars, which I would say are very reasonably priced for sort of next generation technology. But I'm driving a BMW iX at the moment that is not an 800 volt car. This is a 400 volt system architecture. It's about 420, 425 volts full and about 340, 330 volts dead is its operating window range. And I actually think it's totally fine. So here are the reasons that we needed a higher voltage architecture in cars. And the first and the main one and the biggest benefit of higher voltage is DC fast charging. You see, when this car plugs into a DC fast charger, it requests 500 amps. And again, maybe you want to watch a little electrical, how this all plays out situation. And maybe I'll make a video on this topic. I know my dad on his out of spec Dave channel will be breaking these down, but my videos are typically for, you know, sort of nerd level 9,000 uh, viewers like myself. So we're talking, you know, this thing plugs in, you hear me talk about all the time, 500 amps. That is the current that's running into the car. That's what puts the pressure on everything. And uh, CCS typically, uh, I don't actually know if it's a hard coded limitation into the system, but generally the industry is, is capping 500 amps with our general CCS connector, which are on all these chargers here. And um, 500 amps is the amount of current we're running through. And that is sort of regardless of the voltage that the car is at. So when the car is dead, you plug in 500 amps at 330 volts. I don't know, what's that? 160, 170 kilowatts is what you'll get somewhere around there. And then as the car starts to charge a little bit, naturally the pack will have more voltage in it. And it walks its way up to a peak of about 200 kilowatts on this iX. Here comes an F-150 Lightning, for example, relatively low voltage as well. Um, and so having a naturally higher voltage car 
for the same amount of current means more power. And so there's two ways to get a lot of power. Dump a ton of current in, however, that's typically inefficient. Things get hot, there's more heat loss. There's an equation, I squared R, that means for the amount of current that you run through as it increases on a logarithmic curve, you get more losses. And so to reduce the amount of losses, you can step up the voltage. That's why giant power transmitting lines are thousands and thousands and thousands of volts, sometimes hundreds of thousands of volts to get up there. And, um, you know, to, to reduce transmission losses, same thing applies here. Now, the thing is, if we're capped at 500 amps, if you want faster charging power, you do need to go six, seven, 800 volts uh, up on the chargers. Not every charger can output 500 amps at 800 volts or 900 volts or a thousand volts. Like sometimes lucid stuff gets into the 900 volt range. It's really high voltage. And so there's, when we start looking at charging graphs and things, the chargers themselves also have an internal charging profile, but we're not gonna nerd out on that. We're just talking pure benefit of 800 volt systems. And that is charge times. We can charge faster. We can reduce the amount of current into the car, which reduces the losses. However, that doesn't really affect the battery pack on a cellular level. The modules in the battery pack don't really know what the rest of everything they're hooked up to. So it's not like they're under any less stress. It's really all about the transmission losses of 800 volts. So when we're charging the car, the cables might stay a little bit cooler at higher voltage. The connections may not get as hot and the DC pins into the car, all of those things, those are the main benefit. But the battery pack itself still needs all the cooling to handle that power, still needs all the right sort of balancing and, and proper tuning to handle that much power. And so the battery pack itself isn't necessarily benefiting from 800 volts. Now, you can have slightly smaller connectors in there. Your bus bars may not to be as big. I'm talking generally high level again. Um, there's also a benefit when driving the car with 800 volts, although this is not as big of a benefit, I would say, not enough to re-engineer a whole 800 volt system architecture. And this is when you're talking about outputting power, driving down the road, for example, Lucid really targeting max efficiency with hardware, no cost spared, they wanted the best efficiency. They're going to be targeting the highest voltage possible to reduce the amount of current going through all of their cabling, all of their wires to reduce heat loss. Basically, the whole company of Lucid, if I had to describe their architecture design, comes down to I squared R. Everything was based around this equation. Now, okay, are there any benefits to a 400 volt car over an 800 volt car? The answer is mm, not really other than cost. Cost is the big one. The other thing actually would be with some older charging hardware, specifically actually Tesla superchargers, those, the hardware has a voltage cap, a maximum. And in order to charge an electric car, you need to match pack voltage and then dump current in, you know, with a little bit of variance. And so when we're talking about charging at a Tesla supercharger with a, you know, sort of 400 or 500 volt maximum, and you pull up with a Tycon, you have to use something that's called a booster. And there's three different types of boosters out on the market today. The Tycon basically splits its voltage in half and takes the amount of current that the charger can give and then steps up that voltage, basically a transformer in the car. And that's relatively inefficient, quite heavy, a big expensive box. And there's two options in Tycon. You can do a maximum of 50 kilowatt or 150 kilowatt. Now that superchargers are opening up, I would actually recommend specking the 150 kilowatt one. Um, the other way of doing it uh, is the Hyundai Kia Genesis eGMP way, which is they're actually using the rear motor inverter to step up the voltage from these older charging hardware. And again, I believe Tesla V4 superchargers that are going to be doing CCS in America will be up to a thousand volts, but at least in Europe, they're not. Um, and there's some like older EVgo hardware and things like this that we need to step up voltage. Pretty much everything installed that you're gonna find can go up to eight, 900 volts. So this isn't that big of a deal, but I do think it's important. And what's cool about the eGMP stuff is rather than just splitting the pack's voltage in half, sort of cutting it like Tycon does, they say, hey charger, what's your peak voltage? And then the eGMP cars just go, hey, that just give me everything you got and then it'll rectify the power up 
into the battery pack using the rear motors inverter. And that means there's no unnecessary hardware. It's just using existing components and it's such a smart design. That's the next generation of stuff. And it really shows how far out of the way Hyundai Kia went to make that system work really well. And so, you know, that would be really the only inherent advantage to a 400 volt system. Architecture would be to integrate nicely with existing charging hardware. But again, this isn't much of a problem. And so, okay, if 800 volt is better, why don't we all use it? And why isn't every car 800 volts? And it comes down to cost. A lot of cars you use off the shelf components from third party suppliers to basically make their entire architecture go. And the, the higher voltage components are a lot more expensive. They're harder to manufacture. And a lot of them just purely don't exist on the market. So you have to give huge props to Porsche. You have to give really huge props to Hyundai Kia Genesis on eGMP for basically saying, screw it, whatever we can't buy out in the marketplace, we'll just design on our own, manufacture and build. And that takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of money, it takes a lot of engineering resources, and ultimately you have yourself a better product at a higher cost. <laughs> and so, you know, this BMW iX to sort of bring the conversation back around, um, this is a 400 volt system architecture that charges at 500 amps. So that's maximum really is about 200 kilowatts. The Rivian is the same way that can do about 220 kilowatts at 500 amps, a little bit higher voltage than this car. And the only thing these vehicles would gain from having higher voltage would be a little bit more thermal longevity when driving hard, because again, less heat loss, things might not heat up as much. You would have a little bit better efficiency when driving because I squared R and you would have significantly faster charging, assuming the battery pack architecture, the rest of it could handle. Now, those three items aren't necessarily always the top priorities when engineering and designing a car, and that's why many of them are 400 volt system architectures. I actually think the sweet spot for most cars in this sort of area to keep cost in check and to keep it usable for consumers. I think 200 kilowatts is pretty good for charging. Actually, I think the sweet spot is a high 400 volt car. You can use off the shelf components from third party suppliers that are typically rated up to 600, 680 volts. That's sort of that class level. So you can use off the shelf stuff at lower cost. You can, you know, still charge pretty well. And of course, you're not really eking out every last drop of efficiency here. You can just put another kilowatt hour in the battery pack or even less to make up the difference. It's not the end of the world. Now there is an interesting solution, which is what GM is doing with their Ultium cars and specifically their double stack solution, which is all in the big stuff. So Silverado, Hummer EV with the big batteries. And what they're doing is they're actually doing a parallel to series switch and they're bumping the voltage from about 350 volts nominal up to about 680, 700. And that is when we're getting into something pretty interesting because what they're able to do for all of their driveline components, for their DC to DC booster, for all the sub components in the car, they're able to keep those specced at a 400 volt class of component to reduce costs. And then when they charge, they wanna get all the power. So the battery pack basically doesn't send power to any of those devices, ka-chunk, voltage is now really high. So now when you're doing 500 amps at 700 volts, you're getting all the power. And a lot of chargers can't actually even send the power to max out what a Hummer EV could take, for example. It's one of the fastest charging cars on sale. Same with Lucid Air, actually. I'll be testing one of those here shortly. So keep an eye out for all the Lucid content to come. And uh, there you go. Is 800 volt the end all be all? No. Are there advantages? Yes. Is it always worth the cost for those advantages? No, not unless you're trying to build class leading stuff. And that's why Lucid went very high voltage. We're talking almost 900 volts. That's why Tycon is high 700 volts. Uh, and eGMP is really the exception, I would say, of they're not cheap cars. EV6 Ionic 5, not cheap at all. But that's, again, all of the benefits of fast charging are from that 800 volt system architecture. But again, those cars aren't wildly efficient, mostly down to their shape. Really looking forward to Ionic 6, which might prove to be very efficient as a long distance cruiser. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on 800 volt versus 400 volt. I think we're gonna have this distinction, this class of vehicles coming in over the next few years. Um, I think one day, of course, we'll see everything maybe move to higher voltage, but at least for now, I think it's fine either way, but if you're looking for the pinnacle, you'll go higher voltage, 
but don't roll up to a car show and be like, my car's got 796 volts nominal and yours has only got 427. Like it doesn't, doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Thanks for watching another out of spec reviews video. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Tell me why I'm right or wrong and I'll see you on another video soon. Bye-bye.